I got the queen in the house tonight, and she's leaving tomorrow, going back to school. And I want to say a quick prayer over her. Raven, come here for a second. She is knocking it out of the park at college, going to graduate a year early. This is Kylie's daughter, and she's a real blessing. She's a real honor. So I'm going to ask her father, um, he is worthy to do this now, um, to lift her up in prayer, and please stretch your hands towards her. Ahead of Raven, where she goes back to school, Father, I ask that you put a hedge of protection over each and every travel mercy, Father. I ask that you go ahead and just bless the professors, Father. I ask that you open up Raven's mind and her heart so the words that are spoken from the professors they sink deep down inside of her soul, Father. I ask that you align divine appointments and relationships and conversations that just sow into Raven's future, Father. I ask that you give her the courage to go forward each and every day to be an example in the classroom, Father, an example in her friendships and her relationships. Everywhere she goes, Father, let her just reflect you. Give her the courage to profess your name, Father, to have the courage to walk forward, and give her the courage to just seek your name, Father, wherever she goes. Thank you for the time that you have given me to with her, Father. I've been blessed. Thank you for allowing me to be part of her life, Father. We love you. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. I thought she was going to fall out in the spirit there, Dad. That was a heavy prayer. Let's give Kylie a hand. I just wanted to pay honor to Nate Pingree. He's the one who does our props, and I call him last minute. He works all night. I don't know if he's here somewhere or what he's doing. Is he here? He's back there serving even there. So let's give Nate a hand. He does an incredible job. And, and I kind of give him an idea, and he takes the idea to another level. Last Sunday, we did it all in between services. I gave him a little heads up, but I'm just so grateful um, because I'm a visual learner. And to have visuals, I think, is very important to have a team that can present those visuals. And let's just give it, for, give it up for all the leadership. Yeah. I mean, they do an incredible job. Anyone who serves, and I'm just grateful everyone's here tonight, and I'm so grateful for this series on focus. And I'm here to tell you, focus is so important. And as I was driving to church this morning, um, God had put something on my heart because I deal with um, a lot of people that struggle um, with lack of focus. Um, they, they may work for us, with us, I like to say with us, um, in our organizations and maybe even at the church, and they struggle with focus. And I think about all the different things that God has entrusted me to do, and I do them far from perfectly, but I, I, we hire people to grab segments of what we're doing so we don't have to focus on them. And I watch the enemy come at those people to frustrate people, and I'm here to tell you, if the enemy can get your focus, he can get your destiny. I'll say that again. If the enemy can get your focus, he can get your destiny. The Bible says to seek first the kingdom and its righteousness, and God will give you everything that you need. Seeking first means you need to be focused. You need to be focused on God. Last week we talked about um, being focused on God, and that should be your number one point of focus. And being focused on Jesus will allow you to put everything else into focus. You can focus on your personal goals as long as God is number one. And I'm so grateful for this series, and I'm extremely excited about Pastor Danny bringing a revolutionary word to the table in regards to focus. So say focus. focus. So I talked to you earlier about doing better. A lot of us did better. If you're still breathing, you did better. Breathe in. Breathe out. You know, I, I, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. When we sing that song, Raise a Hallelujah, I get so excited when I say the women to sing a part and I say the men to sing a part, and I find myself singing the women's part. I mean, <laughs> and, and it's like when I did breathe in and breathe out, I think I breathe, breathed out first and then breathe in. So sometimes you have to understand you may be a slow learner, but at least you're learning. And if I never stop learning, I'm going to get to where God has called me to be. And one of those things is he's called me to be focused. He's called me to do the things on his behalf. He has equipped me. And when I say me, I'm talking about you because God doesn't play favorites. There may be intimates. We all have different gifts. But this evening, I'm going to talk to you about focusing on fruit. And I'm going to talk to you about the biblical definition of fruit. In 2020, it, you have to be focused. And you, need, you may need to shift on who you're hanging around, how you think. See, you need to be focused on how you think. You can't just think about anything. You have to want to understand one thing about a thought. A thought isn't yours until you agree with it. So the devil will bring thoughts in your head that you can't make it, you'll never make it, you're a loser, you're a has-been, or, or he'll bring thoughts in your head about other people. 
And that's why Jesus says that you have to take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. If your thought doesn't al align with the word of God, it's not going to end well. Your feelings, your feelings aren't right or wrong, they're just yours. But you can't live by your feelings. You need to be focused on the truth and the truth will set you free. Your behaviors, what you behold, you become. And I'm going to talk to you about that tonight too. You got to be focused on a new group. Because if you're going to focus on fruit, I mean, I don't want to follow somebody that ain't got fruit. And I'm going to talk to you about fruit. So Lord, I'm telling you, I'm coming against some spirits in here tonight of, of different things. So I rebuke all confusion in the name of Jesus. I rebuke these things that want to attach themselves to us and cause us to stumble. I rebuke those too. Lord, I lift up the power that raised your son from the dead, that we break generational curses in here tonight, that we cut them right at the root. Lord, give me the words that say, think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. Lord, I ask for forgiveness of all the things that are in me that are not of you, and I receive the forgiveness in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask that you give me the flow in the words. I believe I'm studied to show myself approved unto you, a workman that does not need to be ashamed of the truth. But Lord, I ask that you take over right now at a level that you've never taken it from me before and do whatever you're going to do because the devil is after our fruit. So Lord, have your way here this evening. In your name we pray, amen. Let's give God a hand. So I think it's important not to go through life um, basing your life on assumptions. If you don't know something, ask. Do not buy the cliff notes um, in regards to your relationship with God or anything you do. So I like to look up definitions, um, and I want to be accurate. I don't want to live my life through assumptions. So the definition of focus is a center of interest. Whatever you're interested in, you will focus on. Let me say that again. Whatever you're interested in, you will focus on. It says an activity, an attraction, an attention, a point of concentration. Um, whatever you're interested in, um, you will be attracted to. You, you will, it will get your attention. It will be your point of concentration. I do believe in 2020, if you're going to have focus, you might have to ask God to change your interests. A lot of us wish we weren't interested in certain things. And we're not just talking about tangible things. We're also talking about intangible things, thoughts and emotions and feelings. Because whatever you're interested in, well, you're going to be active in. You're going to be attracted to. You're going to give attention to. Some of you men or women are interested in relationships. And, and, and that gets your attention. It gets this. It gets that. Some of you give, give too much interest to your job, and it gets all your time and your attention and all your concentration. It says a state or condition. Um, a state has to do with a location. It has to do with a perspective. Um, the word condition really comes down to a quick examination of yourself in 2019 was whatever you were interested in and focused on, what condition did it leave you in? Because if you're focused on God, it's going to leave you in a better condition. If you're focused on low self-worth or self-pity or offense or being a victim and all those different things, it's going to leave you in a worse condition. So I want you to really recenter yourself on what you're interested in. And, and maybe you're not interested in God. God's not mad about that. But if you want to be interested in God, ask God to help you be interested in him. Ask God to help you get to know him. And, and it says an interest, and it says permitting clear perception. Perception is your reality. It's how you look at things. It, it's how you view things. It, it's your perspective. Um, Pastor Terry could hear a sentence, and her perception of the sentence could be totally different than mine, even though it was the same sentence, because her reality on how she lives her life could be different. She's been a pastor for much longer than me. She's seen things that I haven't seen. So once something is done, I may react to it differently than her because my perception is different. I assure you her perception is better than mine. Let's give Pastor Terry a hand. You can't pastor this many years and still be standing with the wrong perception. Let's give her another hand. So, so, so here's the thing. When, 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 when all of a sudden I'm interested in something I shouldn't be interested in or I'm thinking about something I shouldn't rather think about or I'm feeling something I wish I wasn't feeling, 
uh, it now becomes my point of concentration or more or less my focus, and then my perception is off. And, and for whatever reason, I have given that thought permission to run my life. I want you to think about that. Why do we give these things that are not God permission um, to run our life? I mean, permission to be offended, permission to be angry, and things of that nature. Now, granted, you're not going to be able to really attack offense at, right away. But once you become offended, angry, resentful, unforgiving, low self-worth, lack of confidence, judging, gossiping, think you're nothing. See, that's when you need to stop it. You just need to stop it. Say stop it. Stop it. So it says perception or understanding. Now the definition of fruit um, is anything produced or occurring. Now, that, I mean, that's why I said about the year of better, 2019. Even, even though it's over, it's not gone. I'm going to build on my better. I'm going to build on 2018 too, and 2017, and 2016, and 15. For since 2012, we've been doing this church thing, and we have never stopped building. We've been accumulating things. We don't want to lose things. We want to accumulate things. And it says now something that you produce, um, and it goes on to say uh, a product, a result, or an effect, or a profit. I don't want to be around people. Being around people that don't got fruit is expensive. Let me say that again. Being around people that don't have fruit is expensive. Um, I want to be around people that have results, that have reciprocity. Now, at the end of the day, there's good fruit and there's not so good. There's bad fruit. And, and, and at the end of the day, there is return if you are carrying bad fruit. You're going to feel something. You're going to think something. You're going to do something. But fruit is a result. Say result. result. So at the end of the day, if you are focused in 2020, you're going to produce some results. I serve the God that gives fruit. And now it says in John 15, it says the key to producing fruit is focusing on Jesus. Now, here's the thing. Um, I don't want to follow a Christian that doesn't have fruit. I don't want to follow a leader or a pastor that doesn't have fruit. I mean, your, your, your true litmus test of the God in you is how much fruit you contain. And at the end of the day, there is godly fruit and there's some ungodly fruit that will manifest itself. But I mean, at the end of the day, you won't go to a business or owner that the business is going under to ask them, how do you operate a business? <laughs> why, if you're going to open a grocery store and the grocery store was going to close, why would you go to the owner of that grocery store and say, tell me how to run a grocery store? It's no different than that. At the end of the day, you've got to go and be around what is working. And if whatever you're trying to work isn't working, there's something drastically wrong. And you need to make some adjustments. You're not a bad person. You're just not able now to really produce fruit. Say produce. produce. The key to producing fruit is focusing on Jesus. Let me say that again. The key to producing fruit is focusing on Jesus. I am the true vine, Jesus says, and my father is the gardener. A garden is only good as good as its gardener. Let me say that again. A garden is only as good as its gardener. I'll prove it to you. You look at my lawn, at my house, it's plush green. We fertilize it, we water it. My neighbors, no disrespect, and hopefully they're not watching. <laughs> it ain't plush green. It's the same grass with the same rain that comes from the same sky. Yeah. One's green, one's not. Why? The gardener. Yeah. God is the gardener. Say, God is the gardener. God is the gardener. Jesus says that he is the true vine. Now check out what it says. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Have you ever been cut off? See, at the end of the day, Jesus is saying, if you don't produce fruit, you're going to be cut off. And being cut off is painful. Being cut off hurts. Being cut off is embarrassing and humiliating at times. But here's the thing. Sometimes you need to get cut. If you are not bearing fruit as a Christian, the Bible says that you are going to be cut off. And at the end of the day, we have the same God, the same Jesus, the same Holy Spirit. Now, we may produce different kinds of fruit, but there still needs to be fruit. 
And tonight I'm going to talk to you about what that fruit is. Say fruit. Fruit. So Jesus says that the gardener, see a gardener protects the garden. The gardener waters the garden. The gardener weeds the garden. And the, the gardener cuts things in the garden. And now it says that if you are a branch, we're the branch that is connected to the vine, at the end of our branch should be fruit. Yeah. And at the end of the branch should be fruit, but check out what it says here. While every branch does bear fruit, he prunes. Very important that you grasp this. There's a difference between being cut and pruned. You may not know the difference in the moment, but there is a difference. We're talking now in this text about four types of fruit. Those that have no fruit, those that have some fruit, those that have more than some fruit, and those that have much fruit. See, in order for you to go from some to more, you have to recognize that at least you got some. And if you work your some fruit, you'll get more fruit. And on the way of working your more fruit, you'll end up with much fruit. See, one thing you have to understand, God distributes gifts, talents. Um, Pastor Danny can sing, play the guitar, and, and do all these things, and preach. I can't sing for the life of me. Now, that ain't my gift. But all of us have this fruit available. We all have this fruit available. And now he says, and one prunes it. So, so when you're getting pruned... At the end of the day, this is what the pruning will sound like. It's different than being cut. Even though it feels like you're getting cut, God is cutting back. And let me talk to you about being pruned for a second. Mm -hmm. See, when you're pruned, see, see, sometimes you're mad at God about who he takes out of your life. Sometimes he takes a, a person, a thing, a job, a house, or whatever it is, and he's pruning it. He's pruning it in your life, and you're mad at him. But I'm here to tell you, reflect back on your life. If that good old boy wouldn't have left, you would have never had the life you have today. In the moment, it's confusing. But reflecting back, they had to go. They had to go for that next thing to come. Now, check this out. Say, check it out. Check it out. See, 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 see sometimes um, when you're being pruned, um, um, and, and, and God will take, so this is a good tree. Say, good. Good. So you got your good tree. And, and, and at the end of the day, you got a little bit of joy on your tree. And God may present a circumstance to take your joy. Mm. See, the reason why your joy is under test is to bring you bigger joy. If you allow him to prune your joy, God will give you more joy. But if you get all twisted and don't allow him to prune, see, I want a bigger version of joy in 2020. See, 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 maybe God will, will, will test your faithfulness. And you get, you're this faithful young man that's serving Jesus for the, and then God will test you. And you'll hear the ch -ch 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 -ch, And he'll test you. And this is your little bit of faithfulness. And it's getting pruned and cut back for you to get a whole lot of faithfulness. And that's what God will do. And I'm here to tell you, if you allow God to prune you. See, pruning is painful. Pruning is not fun. I've seen a lot of people leave that I love dearly. I've seen a lot of people and things pass out of my life. But here's the thing. The self-control, once he tests it and he prunes my self-control and he gives me more self-control, because if I'm going to be focused this year, I'm going to need self-control. I'm going to need to be pruned in such a way that God will do what he's going to do. So sometimes when your joy leaves, it doesn't mean it's gone. It just means he's cutting into it to bring more. See, he's got to cut back in order to bring more. Say more. more. So it goes on to say now that he, 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 he prunes it. He prunes and cuts it back. And when he cuts it back, it feels like you're being cut out. But when he cuts it back, it's in such a way that he's, he, he prunes it in order that you can grow. And sometimes you may not know the difference of being really cut back. Versus, but if you don't produce fruit, you will get cut in any of your life. Hey, look at your job. If you're a deadbeat on your job, you're going to get fired. You're going to get cut. But sometimes in your profession, they may have to reorganize things for you to do better. 
to, for you to be more focused. Now, check this out. It, it'll become even more fruitful. So now we said no fruit, some fruit, and more fruit. That the pruning is about bringing you more fruit. And it says, you're already clean because the word I have spoken to you. See, you really can't really understand who God is without knowing the word of God. Come on. You really don't know who God is unless you know his word. So Jesus is about ready to leave. He's about ready to experience the death and the resurrection. And what he's telling his disciples is profound to me. He's like, you got to remain in me. You got to remain in me because you're going to bear fruit. It says, remain in me and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. I want you to think about that for a second. If you don't it remain in Jesus, you'll still go to work. You could still even buy a house. You may even get a new car. But when you get those things, you won't have the fulfillment of the things if you were with Jesus getting those things. Now check this out. Check this out. It goes on to say, remain in me and I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. At the end of the day, what he's saying is, he is the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Say much fruit. Much fruit. Have you ever gotten fruit and not remained in him? And you rested on your sum and you never saw more? And for the life of you, you're not going to get your much. Because at the end of the day, 2020 is the year of much. And if you're connected to this soil, there is fruit here. There is abundant fruit here. And you should be harvesting what God is doing here. And it goes on to say this. If you do not remain in him, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown in the fire. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, whatever you wish for, it will be done for you. This is the key to remaining in him. The key to remaining in him is having his words in you. You cannot remain in him without this word in you. And if this word is in you, you are going to see initially some fruit. And when you appreciate and work your some fruit, you're going to see more fruit. And when you see your more fruit, pretty soon you're going to see much fruit. But at the end of the day, this word cleanses. This word corrects. This word convicts. This word renews. This word sends. This word forgives. This word polishes. If you ain't got this, you ain't got him. And if you ain't got him, how can you believe in something you don't know? And how can you claim to know him when you don't know him, which is this? And he's about ready to depart, and he's saying, unless you remain in me, and I remain in you, that's talking about a relationship, not a religion. It's talking about a relationship, not a religion. And what it goes on to say, see, here's the thing. A prayer is only a wish unless it's backed up by the word. Could it be all these years you're just giving God a bunch of wishes? And you don't know what his word says about what you're asking him for. And at the end of the day, we got this wish list with God, and God is saying, my word that I have spoken over you is cleansing you. And you look at the pruning now, and you look that your joy is tested. This is pruned. Your love is tested. And if you allow yourself to be pruned, you'll watch God bring a bigger version of love into your life. Check this out. It goes on to say, this is to my Father's glory. It's not to glorify the disciples. When God gives you joy, self-control, faithfulness, love, goodness, long-suffering, gentleness, and kindness, that's to glorify God. See, when God gives you fruit, it's really to glorify him. And here's the thing. You have to understand that all fruit has seeds. So when I give you love and I bring you love, the love I bring you with the fruit that I'm containing has seeds. 
So I'm giving you love, Ben, and you receive the love I've given you. And once you receive the love that I've given you, it disperses. The love I give you has seeds. The seeds get in you, and you bear the very fruit of love that I gave you. And now you've got the love of God for you to take your fruit into another individual's life. Say bad fruit. Bad fruit. See, if you are walking around with your bad fruit... And you got a Vixie. See, somebody said, Grace said this to me after the morning service. If you're eating a, a, a salad that's got fruit in it, and one of the fruits within the salad is bad, the whole salad's bad. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to eat that salad. The majority of you wouldn't eat it. <laughs> so when you've got a tree that's bad, and you come and you bring your victim mentality, and you disperse it on another person, what you disperse, the bad fruit's got seeds too. And now my seeds are affecting and infecting you. See, when I, when I bring my lack and my low self-worth to you and I want to disperse my lack to you and, and play the victim card, it's got seeds. See, at the end of the day, I'm doubting. All I ever hear, I don't know about that, Pastor Jeff. I don't know about Serenity. I don't know about his sport coats. I don't know where he gets those sport coats. But I'm just going to talk my whole day about doubting. And I'm going to give you the fruit of my doubt. And when you receive it, now you see he ain't going to receive my doubt. Why is he going to receive my doubt? Because he doesn't want the seeds of it. <laughs> Every tree has fruit. Either you have good fruit or bad fruit. But all fruit will be distributed as fruit. And it depends on what the seeds are within the fruit. See, see, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care that people try to bury me. People try to hate on me. They try to bury me. You can't bury something that's already planted. <laughs> so you try to bury me. I'm already planted. You just forced me down in the ground. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Boy, my haters didn't like that one. So at the end of the day, what we learn now is anxiety. I'm going to bring you in my anxiety. I have anxiety. I've been treated for anxiety. I'm medication for anxiety. It's, it's a real thing. But I, I mean, this is my hands shake all the time. They shake, and that's just who I am. But I don't want to give you my anxiety. I want to deal with my own anxiety. I'll talk to you about my anxiety. I'll hyperventilate over my anxiety. But at the end of the day, what I've learned about my anxiety is you don't want it. Instead of taking my anxiety, you'd rather take my gentleness. Because if you know me as a gentle person, my anxiety is going out the window. At the end of the day, I replace anxiety. With but here's the thing. Here comes the, here comes the clippers. And now my gentleness is being tested. And I stay on the tree of God. And when the gentleness is tested, he brings me a higher version of gentleness. That's pruning. Say pruning. pruning. I would rather be pruned to grow than cut to burn. I would rather be pruned to grow than cut to burn. So there's none, there's some, there's more. And, and this fruit produces seeds. Say seeds. seeds. So every one of these trees as that represents a person, this could be a defective tree. I've been this. I've been full of anger and fear and self-pity, and I tried to distribute to you my self-pity. I tried to give you here. I mean, have you ever had a person like, hey, hold up, I'm angry and this is what's on my tree, and I'm about ready to disperse my anger to you. You can have my anger. So you gotta understand, when you got a good tree, don't receive their anger. Because their bad fruit's gonna infect your good fruit. And at the end of the day, all you have to really do is say, yes, you can try to give me your anger, but I'm gonna replace your anger with good. You're insulting me, my character, with words. You're coming against everything I represent. My goodness is being tested. You are allowing my goodness to be pruned. And once this goodness gets tested, it goes out the window, and I'm operating in a whole different level of goodness because you brought me your anger, and I returned your anger with goodness. And at the end of the day, God just pruned my goodness and allowed me to have a greater level of goodness to prepare me for instead of one person coming at me angry, now I got a whole flock of angry people. 
and this goodness thing just blows up. Say blow up. blow up. So you look at now the pruning, really what God is doing with pruning and what he will always do, he brings you bigger versions. What I've learned about God is this, that if you're just focused on some fruit, you'll never see more fruit. And once you get your more, your, your more is a different version of your son, some fruit, and then you'll see much fruit. And then you got to keep working this. See, so you have to understand, in the King James, it doesn't say remain in, in me. It says abide in me. Abiding means in accordance with. Mm -hmm. How can you be in accordance with Jesus when you don't know who Jesus is? And how can you believe in something you do not know? See, the abiding births the opportunity for the fruit. But the work within the kingdom produces it. So a lot of us are saying we're faithful, but we will never allow our faithfulness to be tested. A lot of us say we have joy when we really have happiness, which is circumstantial. A lot of us say that we're willing to suffer for Jesus when we're really not. Because when long suffering comes to work for seven years as a pastor without pay and deal with people that aren't always happy, and, and here's the thing. How, how, let, let's look at this for a second. Hold up. I'm going to trade up. Prune me, Jesus. I want a bigger version of long-suffering. Uh -oh. It's kind of like when you pray for patience, and God sends a very impatient person to you. So, so, so here's the thing what people try to do to people all the time that got fruit. So, 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 so they come with their tree that, that is infected. And they try to tell somebody that's got a whole bunch of fruit and they got their insecurity, and insecurity is trying to talk to long-suffering. Mm. Wow. It's kind of like you going to work for a company and telling the CEO how to run it. Yeah. Uh -oh. It's kind of like walking around with the tree that, that is, is, is dealing with bad fruit, and now you're trying to tell somebody how to run a church. I'm quiet up in here. If somebody is carrying more fruit than you, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> I'm getting some looks up in here now. But here's the thing. They will probably hear you can still have some of this fruit, even though you're trying to tell them how to run their things, when they got a whole tree that's been pruned. And they're still here to talk about it. And they haven't taken their ball and gone home. So I'm okay with being pruned. Say pruned. So what do fruitful people look like? You cannot afford to be around people that aren't fruitful. you got to be around these people that are fruitful. Galatians 5 says, fruitful people have Holy Spirit qualities. It says, but what happens when we live God's way? When you live God's way, you produce his fruit. When you live your way, you produce this type of fruit. Fruit. And here's what it says. Check it out. When you live God's way, he brings gifts into your life. For 15 years of ministry and seven years of church, I have watched God bring stuff to us. I have watched firsthand God bring stuff to us. He says, much the same way fruit, say fruit, fruit. appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others. Do you have that? Or is the only person you care about is you? Because if the only person you care about is you, you're going to be running ragged with self-pity and worry and anger and offense and being misunderstood. The Bible says in all you're getting, get understood. That's not what it says. It says gain understanding. See, see, I love what God is, uh, you know, what, what the fruit of the Spirit is is what's on there. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, self-control, gentleness. Those are the things that God will give you in order to bear fruit. Exuberance for life. That is powerful to me. I want to be cheerful. I want to be a good vibe. I want to set the, the atmosphere of the room when I walk in the room. I want to bring somebody that's down. I want to bring them up. I want to have exuberance and be cheerful and grateful. It says exuberance for life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick to things. So when you get pruned, when you get pruned and your kindness is tested, and you, you, you just don't want to be kind, because the person that God is calling you to be kind to is not very kind. 
And now you have the opportunity to more or less grow in your areas of kindness. And at the end of the day, I want to have affection for people. I want God to prune me. I want God to test my kindness. But it says this joy that God can give you. And it goes on, the willingness to stick to things. When you operate with this tree and you get offended, you're going to leave as soon as you don't agree with something. Yeah. As soon as they don't, you feel they don't love you at the end of the day, as soon as you don't think they're kind, or as soon as they didn't hug you. And it goes on to say, to stick with things. You know how much long suffering that we have been through with seven years of church to still be here seven years later? It ain't never about how we feel. It's about suffering for the sake of other people yeah, yeah, so yeah, they yeah. can get to know Jesus. And it says, a sense of compassion in the heart, a conviction of basic holiness permeates things in people. We find ourselves involved with loyal commitments. See, you will never be loyal to a godly commitment when you're loyal to worry. You will never, I mean, here, here's, this, is, this runs in my family. And no, I'm, gonna, here, I'm worried, I'm worried, I'm worried, I'm worried about this, I'm worried about that. Everybody in the family's worried. But I rebuke worry in the name of Jesus. And my parents are no longer worried. And I'm here to tell you this, that I don't want to disperse my worry because my God says do not worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer, petition, and thanksgiving, I present my worry to you, God, and you give me the peace that transcends all understanding. You guard my heart in my mind, in your son, Christ Jesus, because I want that tree. I want to be that tree. Do you understand that, that I ask you a lot to, to make sandwiches? I want you to go to prayer. I want you to attend prayer three to four nights a week. That's a relationship. That's remaining in God. See, you need to understand who God is. See, a lot of us got a wish list with God. Take care of my kid or take care of that. We don't back it up with the word where the world says, word says train a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, so once you give that request to God, you just say, hey, I don't know when they're going to return to it, but it's in your hands. And that's how you operate. But how God answers prayers typically is he gives you peace over what you prayed for. Yeah. A lot of us pray for a mountain to be moved, a circumstance to change, a person to think differently, a person to behave. We pray for money. We pray for cars. And at the end of the day, we wake up the next day and the car still ain't there. <laughs> but when God gives you peace over the car not being there, peace over the car not being there is better than the car. Because if you got the peace over the car not being there, you're eventually going to get a car and you're not going to lose a car again. You're just going to do the things of God. So I'm not going to talk about this worry thing because worry ain't got me. See, here's another thing too. People with bad fruit hang around people with bad fruit. <laughs> people who worry hang around people that worry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me like I'm crazy. We got a whole group of people that like a particular sin, so we all hang out. People with good fruit hang around people with good fruit. See, here's the thing. Allow our joy to meet your sin and watch your sin go out the window. Because at the end of the day, when sin meets the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord will always prevail. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoever that was, say good catch. Good catch. So, so at the end of the day, I've learned this about, so fruitful people, check this out. They stay in loyal commitments. It's never about how they feel. Not needing to force your way in life. You don't need to force favor. You don't need to chase favor. Allow favor to chase you. You, you don't need to worry. You don't need to force your agenda and manipulate an outcome. Allow God to do it. Don't force your way into things. It says to marshal. A lot of us know what a marshal is. Right? A federal marshal. Don't let, now you're getting real nervous thinking they're here. <laughs> they ain't here. But this definition of marshal is to assemble. These people assemble people. 
These people gather people. Now it goes on to say, direct our energies wisely. People that operate with this fruit, they know where to spend their time. They don't make mountains out of molehills. They don't major in the minors. They understand if they're tested, they're being pruned. And here's one thing that's cool about being cut out, being pruned in to grow. The thing is, if you're being cut right now or you're being pruned, don't forget you're still in his garden. Yeah. You're still in his garden because yeah. you couldn't get cut by the gardener if you weren't in the garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't get pruned by the gardener if you weren't in the garden. So if it doesn't feel good, it is good, and say, I'm in the garden. I'm in the garden. If you're still in the garden, you still got a purpose and a destiny, and Come it's on. just part of your process. Now, check this out. This is profound to me. You see, you, you teach what you know, but you reproduce who you are. Let me say that again. Yeah. I can teach you what I know, but I would rather reproduce the fruit that God has given me within me to you because he doesn't discriminate. He doesn't play favorites. And at the end of the day, Paul said to Timothy, follow me, follow Christ. Say fruit. fruit. So what do these fruitful people look like? What do they sound like? It says in Proverbs 12, fruitful people speak life. And they serve. They're not doom and gloom. They're not insecure. They're not so worried about other people. When you meet them, they're going to be positive. They're going to be uplifting. They, I, I mean, when I meet a person for the first time and they complain about something or everything, I don't want to be around that person. Because if you've been where I've been, I'm grateful to be above ground. I'm grateful that I serve a living God. See, see a lot of your fruit I can see in your faces right now of what type of fruit you really have. Fruitful people fill people with positive things. When they come in the room, they'll speak encouragement. They'll do things. They work of their hands brings them their reward. Isaiah 32, fruitful people have peace and confidence. They have peace, no matter what's going on. They have confident humility. Check this out. The fruit of the righteousness will be peace. Its effect will be quietness and confidence forever. People that operate in this realm, they got peace. They got confidence. They go boldly to the throne. They know that that is garbage, and they know that it has nothing to do with God. And it says in Leviticus now, fruitful people have favor and security. If you're walking around this planet, I'm not just trying to teach you about ministry now. Yeah. If you were this way in your job tomorrow morning, you'd get a promotion in the near future. You'd go right to the top over time. If you are operating in joy and goodness and kindness and long-suffering, faithfulness, not complaining about everything, and you're gentle with things. And, and here's the thing about the bottom line about fruit. All fruit up on this tree is led by this. If you don't have this, you're not going to go through long-suffering. If you don't have this, you're not going to be gentle, you're not going to be kind, you're not going to be faithful, you're not going to have self-control, you're not going to be having joy, which is your strength, and you're not going to be good. This is what it comes down to. Why is this why it comes down to? Because this is God. This is who God is. Say love. Love. So, so we want to have love on the tree. So, so I love this. You can't make it up. I will look on you with favor. When you have this going on, which is available to everyone, he, he more or less gives certain things and different fruits and different times. Real fruit is only that has been around for a while. A lot of us have been one-hit wonders. The Bible says you will get favor. The Bible also says you will get favor with men and with God. See, I ask my clients, which is over 150 people, properties, why do you do business with me? Some of them say, I don't know. There's just something in my heart that told me to sign the contract. <laughs> Why did you give me that multi-million dollar line of credit? I don't know. I can't make sense of it. Why did you sell us this church that gave us a $2 million blessing? I don't know. When you have this fruit, you'll have the favor that goes with the fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here to tell you, without this fruit, you can't do much. You will attract people with bad fruit. And he says, you will have favor and he'll make you fruitful. See, a lot of us are trying to make ourselves. I'm a made man. No, I'm allowing God to make me. 
I'm allowing God to grow me. And it says, increase your numbers. I will keep my covenant with you. So when you come with, with your insecurity and all the things I used to have and, and all this others, I'm just so worried about what we're doing. When you bring this to our table, I'm in covenant with God. I'm far from perfect. The battle is his, not mine. Why are you so worried about us and someone else? When at the end of the day, God says, do not compare yourselves amongst yourselves because that isn't wise. What people typically do with a bad tree is they focus on others to get the focus off themselves. And if you're not focused on yourself, you can't focus on God because it's between you and God. It's called a relationship, not a religion. Yes, I'm grateful you're here. But at the end of the day, if you don't tell your circumstances about your God, and all you do is murmur about your circumstances and everybody that caused your circumstances but you, I know this isn't a kumbaya message. <laughs> at the end of the day, if you're coming back or not, but either you got it or you don't. And if you don't got it, you can get it. Let's give God a hand. <laughs> so it talks about favor. This, I didn't, this is the word of God. It says, Proverbs 11.30, fruitful people help people. Fruitful people help people. Check out what it says. The fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. That's knowing between good and evil. It goes on to say, and the one who is wise saves lives. You're gonna have to have this fruit to walk into somebody else's life that is down and out, and you're going to have to be in long-suffering with them. You're going to have to be kind to them. You're going to have to love them. Those who have fruit are focused on saving lives. And let me tell you, it's not you or I that saves the life. It's the God in you and I that helps save the life. Let's give God a hand. So it goes on to say now in Psalm 1, fruitful people know about different seasons. It's so important that you grasp this. That person is like a tree planted. In order to grow fruit, you have to be planted in kingdom ground. You cannot bounce around and go to whatever church you feel like going and then leave once the pastor doesn't say something you agree with. If this isn't your church, go find one and stay there because if you ain't planted you will not grow yeah, yeah, you yeah. will never it's, it's the supernatural created the natural if you have a plant in your yard and every week you pull it up and put it in another part of the yard that thing is never going to gain roots or grow at the end of the day say planted. planted so when they try to bury you with their insults and their bad tree say hey hey I'm already planted so please try to bury me because when you bring me lower, I go higher. When you build a big building that's 100 stories high, you gotta dig real low before you go real high. So don't resent your low living. Understand that God will take you to place. If he did it for Paul, the chief sinner, he can do it for you. Let's give God a hand. So, so, so this is what these people's life look like. They're a person like a tree planted in streams of water which yields fruit in season, you're going to go through dry spells. And when the dry spells come and you're getting pruned, don't break wide. Just understand, this isn't your season for what you're looking for. But if you stay on the tree, God is going to bring the very thing that you prayed for if you just wait. Where people that aren't fruitful, they get anxious, they get worried. They don't think God is going to do it for them. God is not going to lose his reputation over you and your circumstance. God will do for us as he will do for you what he's done for us. Why? Because we're on the tree and we're remaining in him. So what does your life look like in one condition have you been when you just remained in yourself? Hmm. I'm going to remain in me. <laughs> Me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. I'm just going to remain in me. How's that going for you? I don't know. Let me look. There ain't many leaves on this bad boy. And that fruit is not ripe. I don't want that in my salad. And so, so, so it says, in season, say season. season. Those leaves do not wither. Say wither. There's nothing more troubling to me than a withering person. And when you wither, you could get cut. Whatever they do prospers. Have you ever met a person 
that everything they touch works? Have you ever been around clusters of fruitful people? They grow, they, they, they expand territory, they got all the fruit. See, this is what your life looks like hanging around fruitful people. Your life will look drastically different if you have fruitful people in your life. These is what fruit looks like. Fruitful people hang around fruitful people. Fruitful people are important people. I want to be around fruitful people. She's got fruit. See, here's the thing. When you got fruit, they pick on you. See, 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 when you got this type of fruit, you ain't gonna, you wouldn't want to pick fear off the tree. When you got fruit, they'll pick on you. The reason why they pick on you and assault you and verbalize bad things about you, because if you didn't have fruit, they couldn't have nothing to pick on. So I look at this now, and I look at the fruit. This is why I like to be around Amber. She came out of the penitentiary and hasn't looked back. She's a high-level servant. She knows the word of God. She's been part of the restoration of her marriage. This is why I love her. She is the highest, highest, just does everything in the church, no matter what. Need. I want to just be around these grapes. I want to be around this fruit. I just want to be this blueberry, this blueberry. This guy is a high-level servant, and he knows his season. He knows his season. This is, the, I mean, everything she says is positive. Everything she says is light, power, changes the dynamics of the room. He's waiting on multiple businesses for God to bring to the service. He's got patience and temperance and long-suffering. This man right here, favor. Yeah. This watermelon has got favor. <laughs> he is the top at the company in sales, and he's only been there a year. He's got the favor of the Lord. And this brother, this brother has got the Holy Spirit like nobody's business. See, take a picture. Hold on. Take a picture with the fruit. I want to be known with people with fruit. See, let's give the fruit a hand. See, if somebody calls you fruit, you're dismissed. If somebody calls you a fruitcake, say thank you. I got fruit. I got fruit, and I'm grateful to do that. See, people are going to pick on you. So where are you at today? The Bible says in Leviticus 26, has your life been unfruitful? It's not that you're not working. It's not that you don't believe. It says that your strength will be spent in vain. I want you to think about that right now. What does your life look like hanging around unfruitful people? Talking about your circumstances. Talking about how la bad and challenging life is. Talking about how it'll never work out. Your strength is spent in vain. When I was 35 years old, I worked for a lot of things, but when it was all said and done, I had a whole bunch of nothing. I had nothing left. All I had was a tree full of bad fruit. It says your strength will be spent in vain because your soil will not yield its crops. If you're planted here, you're going to be fruitful. This soil is fruitful. Yeah, 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 yeah. This soil has got a crackhead as a pastor. <laughs> this soil is extremely fruitful. See, you're either growing worse or better, but you're always growing. See, 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 if you don't have favor, make an adjustment. Something's off. Your ministry isn't growing within this ministry. That means you're not out there hustling. You're waiting for God to do it. Well, God is waiting for you to do it. You want to be noticed? See, wrong motives will always be revealed. And it goes on to say, the soil does not yield crops nor do the trees of your land yield their fruit. See, see, I don't go to businesses that aren't working to ask how to work a business. I don't go to study pastors that their churches aren't growing because the Bible that I read says subdue, be fruitful, and multiply. 
But you need to know your seasons. There could be a season that you don't grow. But growth is coming. God is not a guy that he shall lie. Or maybe God wants you to pack up and go somewhere else. Whatever it is, I'm here to tell you, if this guy in the front row can run on top of a huge job with loaves and fishes, the largest outreach in any church in this area, on top of his regular job, there's fruit here. There's restoration here. There's power here. There's reconciliation here. There's joy here. There's long suffering here. There's peace here. There's happiness here. See, it's here. Why don't you have it? Some people, same pastor, same sermon. All these different results. Same soil. This is a soil that the family got restored in. This is a soil that the drug addict got set free. This is a soil where that marriage was reconciled. This is a soil where that child returned home. This is a soil that started a new business. This is a soil that got the top of the sales truck. It ain't the soil, it's you. Say it's me. It's me. And that's okay. It's okay. Don't put your head down and sulk in self-pity. God brought you to this soil that is fertile. But you need to be planted. And in order to be planted, you got to be focused. No matter what. If this ain't your church, I want you to be where God wants you to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not here to try to sell memberships. I'm here to tell you, go where God wants you and stay there. Yes. No matter what. what. Yeah. No matter how you feel, no matter whatever it is. So man, 35 years, I've done a lot, but I got nothing. And I was never planted. So it says in Matthew 12, what are you known for? What do people experience when they experience you? A tree is identified by its fruit. If it is a good tree, its fruit will be good. If it is a bad tree, its fruit will be bad. So when you were born, you had bad in you. I had bad in me. Not because of anything I ever did. I just inherited it through a generational curse. And then I didn't understand. My children will inherit things too. I'm going to break those things. It says go to the fourth generation. So, so, so all I had is I was so worried about others. I was so insecure. I found my identity in things and if people like me. I was so absorbed with self-pity and doubted if God was real and, and, and fear, false evidence appearing real. And all I did was worry and I had this tree and I was identified by my actions, not by the Christ in me. And when people think about Serenity Village, I want them, the first thing they think about is love, yeah. generosity, giving. Yeah. It says in Luke 13, how many years has God waited for you? How many years has God showed up in your life it says, then he told the parable. A man had a fig tree growing in the vineyard. He went to look for fruit. Say fruit. Fruit. On it, but he didn't find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard for three years, I've been coming to look for fruit on the fig tree and haven't found any. The person responsible for the vineyard said, cut it down. Why should it use up all this soil? If you're not bearing fruit, why do I even sit in the chair? What, what, what's going on? What's wrong? What's wrong? It ain't God. He doesn't play favorites. Mm. He distributes different abilities. <laughs> but it says, why should the, this plant, this person, take up all this soil? The man, which is Jesus, replied, leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, cut it down. Mm. How long has it been? 
How many times does God have to show up when he has all this available to you? Granted, when you abide in him, you birth the fruit. To produce the fruit that was birthed, you work in the kingdom. You pray, you serve, you meditate. But, but, but it really struck me as I studied this. It tells me something about God. That with God, he's patient with us. Check this out. This is important for us to get here. He's patient with us. He gives us time to get it right. What this text teaches me is two things. God gives second chances and God gives a final chance. The final chance is one more year. The second chance is he came all these times and didn't see any fruit and he gave him one more year. That was the second chance. The final chance is once the year is over, what does he say to do? He says, for those who do not bear fruit, they need special care. How many have required special care? Just like I said on Tuesday night that Jesus spat on his eye. Sometimes when God does something, it ain't what you wanted him to do. You say, really spit? <laughs> it tells me this, that Jesus is teaching us now that I'm going to give you a little more time to get this right. And in this case, he gives a year. I don't know what it is for you or me, but he gives a, this a year. But here's what he says. This is profound to me. He says, dig around it. Dig around this person that can't bear fruit. Dig around it and look at their generational stuff. Look at their sin. Look at their worry and dig around it. Dig around it and don't look at the actual act. Look at the cause of the act. Don't look at the what. Look at the why behind the what. <laughs> Because yeah. I watch, when Jesus looks at a person, he doesn't see what you and I see. He sees kindness and love and gentleness and forbearing and long-suffering. He sees him in you. But here's the thing. Here's the thing that blows my mind. This is how cool God is. He's a little trippy. <laughs> he says, dig around it, dig around it, dig around it, dig around it, dig around that addiction, dig around that fear. Dig it up, do it, dig it up, dig it up, dig it up. Dig it. But that's not the only thing he says. He says, fertilize it. Yeah, 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 yeah. What is fertilizer made of? <laughs> God says, take their crap that allow them not to bear fruit and put it in the ground that they were planted in and let them tell the people that I was a drug addict and I was lost. Here's what I used to do and this is what he's done for me. So he takes all your crap and you got a lot of it Oh yeah. and he digs around and he puts all your crap around you that you're ashamed of and he says, you will overcome by the word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. You will overcome because I want you to dig around it. And then with the, with the ditch, put your crap in it. Don't resent your crap. Your crap allows you to grow. Don't hide your crap. We need your crap to grow. Give God a hand. Another key factor, producing food, fruit requires repentance. Mm. You're going to go amiss. I'm going to go amiss. We're going to do things we shouldn't do. We're going to find ourselves back on this tree. And when that happens, not if it happens in 2020, you're going to do it. I'm going to do it. You have to repent. You have to turn around and pick yourself up and say, I still got time. If I'm breathing, if I'm walking, and if I'm living, I still got a chance at this. I still got a chance. So we have to repent. Say repent. repent. It says in Philippians 1, will this year be like every other year? For me to live in is Christ is to die is gain. You have to get out of the way to love unlovable people. You have to get yourself out of the way to be long-suffering for the sake of someone else. 
It says to die is gain. There is no gain without pain. If I'm going on to live in the body, this will remain fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I don't know. So it's the second Sunday of the year. The prophecy is focus, and we're talking about fruit. In Hebrews 12, it says, since you are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses that are carrying this fruit, they're just carrying it. They got so much fruit. They don't know what to do with the fruit. They're carrying the fruit. And God is saying, what will you do? Will you do what you've always done to get what you've always got? And give people your fear and your anger. It doesn't say to give it to them. It says to bury your crap. Bury your worry to turn into warrior. You can't be a warrior and a warrior at the same time. So what shall I do? Matthew 3.10 says this. What needs to be cut out of your life for you to bear this type of fruit? It says the ax is already at the root of the trees. And every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What needs to be cut out of your life for you to grow? This thing's gotta come down if you're gonna have the year that God has called you to have. I don't know what it is for you, but there are some things that need to be cut. And you gotta be willing to take the ax to the root. Because when you take the ax to the root, the tree comes down. And when the tree comes down, God will do miraculous things. And at the end of the day, you'll sit here with your ax and you can have a little fire with everything you burnt. Because at the end of the day, what is it for you tonight? What needs to go for the fruit to come? What needs to happen? What do you need to say no to this year? What thought, what feeling, what victim mentality, what worry, what, what, what lack, what fear, what, what, what is it? What regret, what is it? What sin, what needs to go? What needs to be taken off on the road? What is it? I don't know, but you do. You and if you don't do you it, that. you will not grow. <laughs> you will not be focused. Okay, and eventually, that, at the end of 2020, God has given us one year. One year. Why not do it today? Why not do it tonight? I don't know what it is. I don't know what God's calling you to do. But I know that. That that root was so strong it broke my ax. I don't know who you are, but I want you to come. It's safe to touch. And I want you to start over there. I've never done this before, it's 15 years. I want you to gather in the back and walk along. When you touch this act, this ax, you name it, you name it, come. Name it when you touch the ax. Just name it.
start to worship, no talking, please. These are things that people have held on to for years. Could be abuse, could be neglect, could be betrayal, could be your sin. physical representation of what you have brought to the Lord. And if you do not see this, that thing will still grow in your life. And by not doing the thing that God is prompting us to do, you give permission for it to grow. So as we close here, it says the time has come for you to produce fruit. 
Anyone else? There's something that needs to be cut. There's something that needs to be cut. It says, you do not choose me. I chose you. He chose you to be there. I appointed you that you might go and bear fruit. I wish that word might wasn't there. It gives us too much grace. I don't want to be that plant in that vineyard that he has to come and see no fruit. For fruit that will last. So that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give to you. So this is all that's left of my worry. This is all that's left of my fear. This is all that's left of my insecurity. And I bring it over here as fertilizer for this tree. My fear, my fear fertilizes my faithfulness. My anger fertilizes my long suffering. My hate, heard the word hate. You don't want to hate. You don't know why you hate. You wish you wouldn't. Pretty soon you're going to be good. Your joy, totally miserable. You bring it to here. Because what was the cross made out of? A tree. Sometimes when you ground up a tree, it's used for a lot of things. And what used to be bad now looks good. In 2020, you got to go. You got to go for it. Because I'm here to tell you, it is on my heart to tell you globally in this church that you are going to see things this year that you've never seen. You are going to do things that you've never done. And you are going to watch God bring things to you that he's never brought. Because these are the days of the harvest. These are the days that God will do what God always does. These are the days where he will bring rain in the desert. That he will split the sea of your circumstances and you will be able to walk right through it. That even though it will get dark, there is light in the morning. Even though you may cry, there is victory coming around the corner. Even though they may leave you, God will never leave or forsake you. This is the year that God will do everything you ever asked him to do. If you allow, yourself to be pruned you have to cut some things out he can't work with that he can't work with that he ain't mad at you you're not a bad person give it to him it's the desert song this is your time I want to change this atmosphere now before you come to the altar with this I'm giving God a hand before he does it. Before he brings it, I'm gonna clap.